A witness of the gifts of the Spirit. What is a simple definition of a gift of the Spirit? A spiritual bestowal of power for the purpose of building the kingdom of God. This spiritual power is God's priesthood in action. It has not come upon us by passing a worthiness interview from a church authority or by years of scholarly study. It is not qualified by gender or age. It is simply given to God's humble servants because of their pure hearts and an eye single to his glory. Priesthood is an interesting word. We often associate it with the rights to officiate in church ordinances and duties. The full implication is more to do with the level of relationship we have with the Lord. That relationship is what determines the level of spiritual gifts we are allowed to use. If we are disconnected from the Lord, our outward priesthood actions will be hollow and without power. Some of these gifts of the Spirit can be received before baptism and some after receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is meant to be a general list of the gifts the Lord would bestow upon his servants. Alma 13, Doctrine and Covenants 84, 35-39 and also all they who receive this priesthood receive me, saith the Lord. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth my father, and he that receiveth my father receiveth my father's kingdom. Therefore all that my father hath shall be given unto him, and this is according to the oath and covenant which belongeth to the priesthood. Seeking the gifts of the Spirit can be dangerous if our heart is not right with God. We are commanded to seek these gifts, but there is a warning. Wherefore, beware lest ye are deceived, and that ye may not be deceived, seek ye earnestly the best gifts, always remembering for what they are given. For verily I say unto you, they are given for the benefit of those who love me and keep all my commandments, and him that seeketh so to do that all may be benefited that seek or that ask of me, that ask not for a sign that they may consume it upon their lusts. Doctrine and Covenants 46, 7-9 And I'll list the gifts of the Spirit. 1. Believing on their words that Jesus is the Christ. 2. Gift of the discernment. 3. Gift of revelation. 4. Gift of forgiveness. 5. Faith to be healed. 6. Ministering of angels. 7. Gift of charity. 8. Gift of tongues. 9. Interpretation of tongues. 10. Faith to heal. 11. Discerning of spirits. 12. Gift of prophecy. 13. Gift of preaching. 14. Gift of translation. 15. Working of miracles. 16. The word of knowledge. 17. The word of wisdom. 18. To know the diversities of operations. 19. To know the differences of administration. 20. Knowing that Jesus is the Christ. Although it is important to seek the best gifts, we must be careful to only seek them for the glory of God and not for our own pride or personal promotion. The Lord is very good to us and promises to share these gifts freely. For all have not every gift given unto them, for there are many gifts, and to every man is given a gift by the Spirit of God. To some is given one, and to some is given another, that all may be profited thereby. Doctrine and Covenants 46, 11-12 if your desires are to know truth, to become servant of the Lord by bringing his glory to the earth according to his will, then you are ready to receive the gifts of the Spirit. And it shall come to pass that he that asketh in spirit shall receive in spirit, that unto some it may be given to have all those gifts, that there may be a head, in order that every member may be profited thereby. He that asketh in the Spirit asketh according to the will of God, wherefore it is done even as he asketh. Doctrine and Covenants 46, 28-30 Four times the Lord uses the word asketh. When we ask the Lord for that which we desire in righteousness, in harmony with God's will, we are given all the gifts. I will now carefully go through this list of spiritual gifts to explain what they are. This is my witness based upon what the Lord has shown me and commanded that I share. For more information how they can be developed, refer to the book How to Open Your Spiritual Eyes. Please pray for a personal witness for how this can be applied for you. Number one, believing on their words that Jesus is the Christ. This is perhaps the most fundamental of the gifts of the Spirit, and all other spiritual gifts are built upon this. One of the first gifts we receive is to believe the words of the Lord's servants regarding the truthfulness of Jesus Christ. 
Have you ever wondered why so many of the Earth's population have no interest in hearing the gospel? They go about their lives comfortable in their beliefs, often established from thousands of years of culture and tradition. Why would the Lord not bless everyone with this gift to believe, so that they may all have the blessings of the Lord's covenant? The fact is, the gifts are available to all those who desire them. This gift is particularly unique in that it was first bestowed before we were born into mortality. Not all are under the covenant of the house of Israel, and not all have partaken of the everlasting covenant. Footnote. The everlasting covenant is not polygamy, as stated in Doctrine and Covenants 132. It is the complete plan whereby we covenant to be heirs through Christ's atonement and to plan toward eternal exaltation. The details of this covenant have not been revealed in their fullness to the world or to the temporal church. The everlasting covenant is central to Jesus Christ. The seed of men live a telestial law and are covered under the atonement, but will not receive eternal life unless they come unto Christ. Those who have made previous covenants, the elect, will feel their hearts burn within them. When they are in the presence of the Lord's servants, and they will desire the gospel. There are occasions where Gentiles, because of special circumstances, feel compelled to come unto Christ. As many people as there are in the world, and with so many religions, philosophies, it is truly a needle in the haystack for most people to find this gift from God. Many people are hungry for the gospel, but they do not know where to find it. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Amos 8.11 This declaration of the Lord was originally given for the Israelites because they had abandoned their covenant. The Lord gave us the new covenant. Testament is the same as covenant before his resurrection and made the gospel available to all the Gentiles. But because of the craftiness of men, or secret combinations among the principalities and powers of the earth, it has become difficult to find the Lord. For there are many yet on the earth among all sects, parties, and denominations who are blinded by the subtle craftiness of men, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, and who are only kept from the truth because they know not where to find it. Doctrine and Covenants 123.12 it is the responsibility of the Lord's servants, as they are called, to preach his gospel. Therefore repent, all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me, and believe in my gospel, and be baptized in my name. For he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Ether 4.18 What are the signs that shall follow those that believe? These are no less than the gifts of the Spirit. But first, the gospel is to be preached by the Lord's servants. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they not hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Romans 10, 14-15 when they shall hear the gospel, they feel the Spirit and desire to learn more. Sometimes this comes in the form of scripture, and sometimes by direct preaching. What does it take for someone to acquire this gift? It requires us to have a desire to know to the extent that we cry out to God. This was the case with King Lamoni. And it came to pass that after he had said all these things, and expounded them to the king, that the king believed all his words. And he began to cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, have mercy according to the abundant mercy which thou hast had upon the people of Nephi, have upon me and my people. And now when he had said this, he fell unto the earth as if he were dead. Alma eighteen forty to 42 The power to believe opened the door to a complete baptism of fire and Holy Ghost experience. It is beautiful how the Lord blesses us according to our faith, regardless of who we are. The Gentiles in Jerusalem were able to receive a fullness after they believed. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. 
Acts eleven fifteen to 18 To hold their peace means to keep it to themselves. Through the gift of believing on the apostles' words, they were able to receive the Holy Ghost. Truly, the gift to believe on their words is the strike point for all the gifts of the Spirit. And it came to pass that the thirty and first year did pass away, and there were but few who were converted unto the Lord. But as many as were converted truly signify unto the people that they had been visited by the power and Spirit of God, which was in Jesus Christ, in whom they believed. And as many as had devils cast out from them, and were healed of their sicknesses and their infirmities, did truly manifest unto the people that they had been wrought upon by the Spirit of God, and had been healed. And they did show forth signs, and also did do some miracles among the people. 3 Nephi 7, 21-22 as I have said before, hope is believing, faith is asking, knowledge is receiving, and priesthood is becoming. This gift is a precursor to all other gifts. And again, more blessed are they who shall believe in your words, because that ye shall testify that ye have seen me, and that ye know that I am. Yea, blessed are they who shall believe in your words, and come down in the depths of humility, and be baptized, for they shall be visited with fire and with the Holy Ghost, and shall receive a remission of their sins. 3 Nephi 12.2 The gift to believe on their words opens the door to, be, to the baptism of fire and gift of the Holy Ghost. And now, Father, I pray unto thee for them, and also for all those who shall believe on their words, that they may believe in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me, that we may be one. 3 Nephi 19.23 To have the gift to believe on their words that Jesus is the Christ is to have the faith to start the journey of ascending the hill of the Lord. We have planted the seed in our heart because of hope, and if we cry out to the Lord, we will be given more gifts until we have them all in their fullness. It is advisable as the Lord's servants to pray that those to whom we minister receive this gift. Not everyone receives all the gifts in this life, but eventually as you receive all things from the Lord, every gift shall be manifest to you.